We are moving into the midpoint of Episode 4 Act 3 as we officially have less than 30 days of the act left now. And to bring in this minor milestone, we have a new patch to talk about that will bring in some minor game changes. What is going on Pro Guides family, it is your host Sergeant Frost, and today we have the patch 4.10 rundown to go over today. This patch has some interesting new gameplay system updates to talk about along with a surprising yet unexpected change to a map in the game. And even though the days of Act 3 are dwindling down as we speak, it's not too late to get the help you need to climb in this act. That's why on our website ProGuides.com, we have Radiant and Immortal level coaches who can help you understand the game better and give you the tips and tricks you'd need to make a mid-act push for the rank of your dreams. The link is in the description of this video and now let's get right into the patch rundown. The agent changes this patch aren't too big, there's mostly just some quality of life changes to the progress tracking. The devs have changed the agent progress charge bars. They have been moved to a consistent location and they have been made a consistent size for these following agents. These agents include Reyna, Cypher, Breach, Fade, Jet, Omen, Phoenix, Rays, Sky, and Yoru. And for our final agent change, the devs have updated Omen's 3P model to increase fidelity and detail. For map updates, Haven is getting an interesting change to a couple of pieces of cover that many defenders have used to stay safe and hidden in the A and C bomb sites. The devs have removed some pixel collisions in these two areas of Haven. On A site, you can no longer walk up to the front of A site cover. And on C site, you can no longer jump on top of the C site cover without a boost ability. For instance, you now need a jet updraft to get on top of the C site cover. In gameplay system updates this week, the devs are focusing on making game performance more transparent by adding new on-screen info to help telegraph in-game performance. The devs have added a new performance graph to display shooting error values for recent shots on the client. This is the same information visible in the crosshair error settings, but it should help players to better diagnose their own performance issues after an engagement. To explain this change in layman's terms for those who are not as knowledgeable on performance issues, sometimes when playing a game your system will take slight performance hits whenever something graphically intense happens on screen. In Valorant, for example, this could be gunshots, utility being used, explosions, loud noises, ultimates going off, smokes being placed, or sometimes just multiple agents on your screen at once all firing their guns. This change makes it so that when you're firing your guns, if your game is taking larger than normal hits to system performance while engaging in gunfights, you will now have a graph to measure this stat and see it live while playing. This way, if your system is taking a huge performance hit, you can now diagnose the issue live while playing and do whatever you have to do to your system to correct it as soon as possible. Moving on, let's talk about several gameplay consistency updates coming to us in this patch. The devs have fixed an issue where a player's ping on their frame rate spikes could cause an excessive buffer to develop and persist for multiple seconds. To explain this in a bit more detail, the devs have given us an example of what you may have experienced while this was happening. For instance, you may have experienced increased server-side input latency, which could make inputs take longer to be applied than would be expected based on your ping. You could have also experienced additional delay in your view of other players, which could give you less time to react. These are just a couple of symptoms of frame rate spike issues that have now been addressed. The devs have added a new performance graph showing network RTT jitter to help you understand if you're experiencing network issues not reflected in your network RTT average and max values. And finally, for our last in-game system update, the devs have also added another new performance graph, network RTT plus processing delays, which captures the effective latency you experience due to network round trip time, server move processing, and client move processing delays. While a lot of these changes may be foreign and hard to understand for the average player who didn't major in computer science, just know that the devs have given us more tools in the form of in-game graphs to help us monitor our system during in-game situations in order to help us understand what is going wrong when we experience stuttering, frame rate spikes, ping spikes, and general gameplay inconsistencies on the client side. Feel free to investigate when the patch goes live if one of these new graphs may help you monitor a problem that you know your system may need to look out for during in-game use. Now, let's transition into talking about bug fixes, starting off with the agents. There are now voice lines heard by allies when deployable abilities are destroyed. These voice lines are for Chamber's Trademark and Rendezvous, Killjoy's Turret and Alarm Bot, Cypher's Tripwire and Spy Cam, and Yoru's Gate Crash. This change has the potential to make it a lot easier to hear when you're being flanked because your teammates will hear a voice line that a piece of utility was now destroyed. Good on Riot for finding a way to increase communication through the function of the game without having to involve live comms from players. The devs have fixed a bug where Neon's high gear would automatically stop after using fast lane or relay bolt. They have fixed an issue where observers would see Viper's enemies glow red when they were near the outside of Viper's pit. You will also notice that the devs have fixed Chamber's rendezvous radius not showing for spectators and observers. And finally, the devs have fixed Brimstone's incendiary feeling damage in chunks of 15 instead of 1 like the other zone damage abilities in the game. The overall DPS should be unchanged though. In the cosmetic bug fixes department, there is now a bug fix for minor flickering that was occurring on protocol weapons via effects when inspecting, ADSing, and reloading. 
I personally have noticed small bits of flickering on the Protocol Phantom when it's fully upgraded in my own games, so I'm glad that this issue has been addressed. In gameplay system bug fixes, a bug has been fixed where agent specific keybinds would sometimes not work properly, even though the settings menu showed them as applied. There is a note that this fix went out in patch 4.09, but they wanted to make sure users on the live game weren't experiencing issues in this area before calling it fixed. And finally, they have fixed a bug where the combat report would rarely not show up for the entirety of the game. And to wrap up this video with known issues, the devs are aware that the spike plant and diffuse bar are not shown for observers with minimal HUD enabled even when spectating the agent who is planting or diffusing, and they are actively working towards a fix on that. Well guys, that's all we have for the patch 4.10 rundown. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind this act.